there are times when we look at our schedule and we say, why is a thing so crammed up? Or why is it that I'm sitting around doing nothing? Why is it the entire office is frantic at one time and, and relaxed at the other? And that has to do with productive scheduling. Today, what we're going to do is look at the dentric schedule. And I'm sure if you have something other than dentric, you can do the same thing. And show how by presetting our schedule, we can have a very productive day. Uh, we were just with an office and we were able to add something like, what, an additional four productive hours to a doctor's schedule just by using this these principles of productive scheduling. So uh, let's let Danielle tell us exactly how that worked. Mm -hmm. So there's a few parts that come together with uh, getting a, uh, your schedule as productive as possible. And we all know if you're going to be in the office and you're going to pay your team to be in the office, what you want to do is have the most productive schedule possible. You want to keep your team busy. You want to keep them efficient. Um, and you want to, of course, have them doing things that do uh, result in either production or collection. That's, that's what you have them there for. So um, everyone knows that I go to different offices, I visit different offices, and I uh, spend a day to um, see how everybody works, how the team works together, how the doctor works with the team, how the flow with the patients go, how they're scheduling, answer the phone, and so on. And consistently across the board, when I come into offices, I see that productive scheduling is absent. So basically what, what people do and what what staff is trained to do is to fill holes on the schedule so that there are no holes and the doctor is seeing patients. But holes is not what you should be working with. When you're doing correct productive scheduling, there's three parts that you should always be looking at before you book any patient in your day. And that is to see the room availability, the doctor availability, and your assistant availability. So when you think about that, you can't schedule unless a room is free. You shouldn't be scheduling unless a doctor is free, and you shouldn't be scheduling unless an assistant is free. And if you have front desk that's just filling holes, then what you're doing is you're creating a schedule that looks productive but is unrealistic. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so whether you're using Dentrix or Eaglesoft or any other software, it's all similar, and they all have the feature of scheduling productively. You just have to know how your software works. We're going to talk regarding Dentrix because we do work with Dentrix, and the majority of our, of our clients do use Dentrix as well. If you don't, I would call your software company and ask them what they have that's similar to what we're going to show you. Um, so w we are going to have a few different webinars to put a bunch of pieces together. Uh, this is just the first one. The first one we're going to focus on how to make your schedule productive with the appointments that you have. After this, we're going to work on how to make sure you protect those schedules so that when patients do move or cancel or, or something happens to your schedule, how to put something in to prevent your staff from having to rethink the whole process all over again, which is a waste of staff time. So today we're going to focus on the point of of making your schedule as productive as possible. So if you look at the schedule that we have in front of you, you have a blue side and you have a pink side. And what I want you guys to all know with this is what I, I typically work with, it may not be what you have right now, um, so you will have to, of course, change, change that process according to how many doctors you have, how many rooms you have, and how many assistants you have. For this particular office that I just worked with last week, they have three rooms per doctor, and they have two and a half, I would say, assistants. I'm going to say two and a half because two are active assistants, which most doctors have two active assistants to run their schedule. And then you either have a runner or a floater or sterile tech, you have someone else there to help. If you don't, of course, as we're doing these webinars, you may consider getting one. To me, any office, if you are a single doctor working with two assistants, you're always gonna benefit from someone running your uh, sterilization room, flipping your rooms, cleaning your instruments, and making sure all that's in place. That's how we run it here, and that's how most of our clients do run it. So for here, the blue room, uh, the blue section of this would be two rooms being utilized and of course one room not being utilized. This particular office, which we will use as an example, their thought process is 
a column equals an assistant. And I, if you, if you do think that way, I want you to get that out of your mind because it's not true. It's not realistic. I can understand how you would think that would work, but it's not true because uh, you do need to have the time to have a room clear, have a room cleaned up, have a room set up and get your next patient in that room. The side to the pink, which we're going to look at after we tear apart the blue section, is more of a realistic way of thinking. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you first how the scheduling is meant to work in Dentrix or the software program. So we have this first patient here. We have Daffy Duck that's coming in at 8 o'clock. So Daffy Duck is coming in at 8 o'clock. So you've given him an appointment time of 8. What time do you think Daffy Duck's going to arrive? He's going to arrive at 8. Some people are, you know, a little bit better with their time management. They get there early, but for the most part, your patients arrive on time. The way this is set up here, if you look at this blue schedule in here and you have these slashes here, the way it's set up that it's been scheduled is that Daffy Duck doesn't need any doctor time at all. And if you look at here, this is how it works in Dentrix where you can actually assign that. The way it works is these slashes indicate an assistant only, so a doctor is not needed in that room. This is a post-op check. A doctor does need to go in there. So if you're looking at productive scheduling to make sure that you're going to stay busy, you need to decide when you're going to be in that room. So when I went to this office, what we did is we took a look at their schedule and each appointment, each that each appointment they had on their schedule, we did this with. And I sat with the front desk, the doctor, and the doctor's assistants, and I said, is this real? Is this only going to be where Daffy Duck comes in at 8 o'clock? Daffy Duck's going to sit in that chair for these three slashes, and our, our units are put into 10-minute increments. Dentrix will allow you to change that to whatever you want. Most people, and I think the default of it is 10 minutes. So it shows Daffy Duck will be there for 30 minutes. And for each 10 minute increments, it's going to be only an assistant and that and Daffy Duck is out of there at 830. So when I would look at that team and I'll ask you the same thing, is this realistic? Is Daffy Duck going to come in at eight, only be with your assistant for 30 minutes and be walking out of that room at 830? Is that the way your post ops work? For us, no, that wouldn't be. For us, it would be, a patient arrives at 8 o'clock. My assistant has an 8 o'clock time. They're going to grab Daffy Duck, bring him back to the room, uh, put a bib on him, ask him how he's feeling, take a look at the site, maybe take a picture or so, have the doctor in there 10 minutes later to take a look, evaluate the surgical site, see how it's doing, say something to the patient, do something, whatever it is. And then the last 10 minutes is us taking off the bib, giving some pre post op additional instructions, getting the uh, patient uh, a time to come back again, and then leaving that room at 830. That's the way we have it. So that's what you would need to ask your team and, and yourself. How do you want these templated? Because if you were to go back to look at this and you were to have an X right here, which would indicate a doctor time, you've just made yourself a productive schedule for this very first appointment. So what that does is it would reflect here on the very left-hand side where you are and where you are not during your day. So what we would like to see is putting an X there. Do not, doctors, do not concentrate on assistant time. As long as they're being efficient with your doctor time, it does not matter how long they're in the room with your patient. If they want to be in there for an extra 10 or 20 minutes to get them a nice blanket, tuck them in, make sure their day is doing fine, let them. It only increases your standard of care and it also improves your patient's experience in your office as long as it doesn't affect your production and where you're going to be, which will show you it doesn't, there's no way it ever could, let them have the time. So when you guys are doing what Dr. Shell and I are about ready to do, and you double click on this and you say, okay, how much time assistant do you want for this? How much time do you want to take that patient back, make sure they're comfortable? And they'll say, they probably will say, only 10 minutes we need. Great. Dr. Shell just says, okay, he wants 10 minutes. He wants to be in there 10 minutes. I take them back, make sure there's no questions, problems, upsets, issues. I get Dr. Sheldon in there for his 10 minutes and I'm gonna spend another 10 minutes to get them out of the office, out of that chair and make sure all is good and reappoint them. Great. Okay, now what you've done is you've just made this a very realistic schedule. Now you have a productive scheduling on this. So again, we're saying on this, you have three rooms here. So you're gonna see that we're gonna probably utilize this third column 
that is not being utilized right now. The next appointment that comes in. But can I just uh-huh. add something for a second? Take a look what happened, and you might have to rewind the uh, the, the video to see that. As soon as Danielle changed changed this slash to an X, it put a blue block here. The blue block means that's my time in the schedule, and as Danielle said, that's the most important thing. Is for me to be productive and not sitting in my office waiting for the next patient to come in. So if we know that my productive time is only from 810 to 820, then we're blocking, using using the rooms uh, correctly, then we're making sure that at 820, I can go into another room and I can do something else. And that will, that will allow me to be more efficient. All right, and so let me actually throw something else in there for you. If you start your day at 8, and this appointment here was starting at 8 because in your, in your staff mind, your day starts at 8, your patient starts at 8. Let's let's actually step that up a little bit. You want to start your day at eight. Your staff is there before you're ready to start your day. You might be there getting some coffee, going through your emails and notes. Maybe you're not even there yet. Maybe you're a doctor that just comes into the parking lot at, you know, 758 and you run in and you're going to see your patient. It doesn't matter. Who cares? What I would do is move Daffy Duck up one unit have Daffy Duck come in at 750 so your assistant can get that patient in and ready as you're doing whatever it is that you need to do to be in that room at 8. Now you are starting at 8. You've just improved your production time on that by moving the patient up, letting your assistant get the patient ready while you're not even there yet or or prepared yet. We're going to do this to your entire room to scooch things up. We have patients start at 7.30. Dr. Sheldon starts at 8 o'clock. We start things at 7.30 because we do get the patients in, get them prepped. If it's a new patient, then we're spending a little bit more time to get an x-ray or whatever it is. If it's a surgical patient, we're getting them in, getting them draped and rinsed and everything else they need to. We're utilizing that time while he is not yet ready to go. So we go to the second appointment because now you now we're creating some room here. The next one is a post-op. So this post-op is actually scheduled differently than this one. Why? Well, you need to ask that question to your assistants or figure it out for yourself. Why do you have some post-ops with more time than others? For us, we would know in our office, we that would have to come from surgery. We ask about post-ops when, when surgeries are finishing. We ask the doctor, would you like the patient to come back for a post-op? You ask that question because in some offices I go to, every surgical patient gets a post-op no matter what but you don't need to do that. We won't have a post-op if it's a, you know, an extraction or something that's minor that they don't need to come back for. We're not going to have them come back until they need to come back for maybe see if they're ready for the implant or something else down the road. You don't always need to see these post-ops. Sometimes you may have a post-op that's an assistant only. A lot of offices do that. We do a lot of assistant only post-ops. We will load our third column down with assistant only post-ops. If we need a doctor, we'll go get them. But for the most part, we can take a look. We can take a picture. We can document what we've seen and make sure all is good without taking that away from your time. So maybe this one's a little bit bigger because at that post-op, maybe it's a it was a pretty big soft tissue grafting. You want to see them back, spend some time to go over cleaning or whatever it is. It doesn't matter how much time. We'll just make it correct. So you might go in here with your assistant's front desk and yourself and say, all right, well, that's a little bit ridiculous. I don't need to be in there for 30 minutes and that's too much time. I don't want that. All right, well, then you can decrease it. So you can say, first one is going to be your assistant. Make sure that patient's, you know, good, draped, cleaned, see what's going on. Maybe you only want to be in there for, say, two units. And then this last one is not going to be you. You're not walking out with the patient. You're not undraping them and giving them, you're not doing any of that. You're leaving, so make that your assistant only. So maybe you're in there for 20 minutes because you're going to be taking out a whole lot of sutures and it's a soft tissue delicate graft and you want to do it yourself, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is you give that instruction to your assistant of what you need of realistic time to say, give me 10 minutes, give me 20 minutes, give me an hour. You have to give them the time that you need so that we can find out how much time we need to get that patient ready or done after you're finished. So now we've made this again more realistic and we have we have made it to where it's real time. So now to make it productive, hence productive scheduling, we have to move this up to where it works 
stacking your exes. You're purely only stacking your exes. That's all you're doing, like a game of Tetris. So now, if you look at the side, we've actually made it connected. So now it shows you're coming into this room at 8. When you leave that room at 8, you're going into this room at 8.10, and you're going to be in there until 8.30. You're stacking your production. And it doesn't matter on this, like we said before, if your assistant said, I want to be with that patient for, for 20 minutes after because I want to whatever it is. It doesn't matter. She can extend that down as long as you're going into that next room to be productive. That's all that matters. So you can go through this with all of your appointments and double check to make sure it's realistic. And after you guys do this for a while, it's going to be... It's going to be second nature to you to be able to do that. So we're going to go into the new patient examination that you're going to do next. Now, as you're doing this, you're probably also going to find which our next webinar will we'll be on when you're doing block scheduling to make sure that you are seeing the right appointments at the right time. You don't want to stack your morning with post-ops and new patients and then do all your surgeries, you know, midday or end of day. All, all doctors are different. So, you you know, that does come to part of when do you want to see what. So this is a new patient examination. I don't know how much time you need for one, uh, but the well, I'll use the example I was using for the other office of we have one assistant time, they come back, we do a CAT scan, we do a PA of the site, we do an ex, uh, a, a picture or so, talking to the patient, seeing what they need. And for us in our office, we probably use more like 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But, you know, for a lot of offices, they just want that. It doesn't matter what you have. Then you have three doctor units. So this is actually a little bit too big for, for what you need. We need to reduce it a little bit. So this one shows patient comes in. We get a few shots of an x-ray or a CAT scan. Doctor comes in for 30 minutes, talks to the patient. I don't have any assistant units after that for most offices or all offices I've visited because they're going to go from this to the consultation room. It's not going to be in the op. You're, you're not going to waste your chair time to, to discuss treatment. You're going to get them out of that room so you can use it for another patient. They're going to go to a consult room. So we don't have any assistant units after that. So then you're done. So then you have, you're working with your two post-ops and your patient. But you are going to need time to clean up that room. So what are you, correct. how are you doing, how are you, how are you scheduling that? Correct. So he, Dr. Sheldon's correct. If you look down on this day, there's no time for setup cleanup. What you have is a staff that's getting ready to kill each other because they don't have, one assistant needs them out. One assistant needs them in. There's no time to flip that room. There's no time to get the patient out on barrier, spray, cavicide, bleed your lines, whatever you're doing, reset up for the next room and get that patient in on time. All this is telling me all right here and all this where it's back to back is your patients are gonna be waiting and getting upset and your staff is gonna be frustrated and hungry and exhausted. So yes, we wanna make sure there's time. After this post-op, we only need 10 minutes to set up for a new patient because you're talking three instruments. It's not much at all. We have three columns, we have three rooms we can use. So instead of trying to stack it where we have a wasted time here, I'm gonna take this over to the third column and I'm gonna utilize that column so that I'm stacking it in. Now you have, again, productive scheduling. So again, keep in mind, we're trying to do a few things here. We're trying to increase your production. We're trying to make this a very realistic schedule for the patient for you and for your team. And we're trying to create a better experience for your patients so they're not being rushed in and rushed out. And you wanna give ample time to your assistants to feel good about what they're doing. They know they're gonna have time to clean up a room. They know they're gonna have time to do their notes and their transactions, which means less errors for for your team to, to, to have. So then now we have some clear space here. That doesn't mean that you can schedule patients there. Never look at clear space as, oh, we can see the patient right there. Remember, we have to look at room availability, doctor availability, and your assistance availability. For this, for this example that we're using, we have two assistants and we have a floater or a runner, whatever you want to call them in your office. So now we can start moving up some stuff. This is our next one only. We have, this is actually an assistant only post-op. But the way Dentrix 
templates or, or, or does a default scheduling is it gives you all X's. Well, assistant only doesn't need any X's. It needs all slashes and your floater, your third assistant, whatever you want to call them would be the one that's going to run this. And you can run these all day long. All day long, you can have people come in for, you know, emergencies or post ops or whatever you want with assistant only. It has nothing to do with your schedule. Move it over. That goes into your third column. Now we're working with your first surgery. We have two lost, wasted production units right now. So all I really need to do is take my surgery and move it up. But before I do that, it's all X's. You're not going to be walking that patient to the chair and draping that patient, rinsing the patient, getting them ready. You're not going to be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. What you're going to be doing is coming in when your assistant's ready for you. So you take a look here. First thing you ask your team is, how much time do you need to get this patient set up? If you're doing IV sedation, anesthesiologist, PRF or something, you need some more time. If you're not, you need a straight just 20 minutes to get that patient ready. That says no PRF, no blood draw, none of that. Just getting them in, ready, blanket. Do you have any questions? Are you comfortable? You understand what's going on today? That sort of thing. That's it. Do you, for this surgery, do you, doctor, really need 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? Do you really need all that time for that surgery? When I was doing this with the office last week, they would say, oh, no, I don't need that much time. Or I actually need a lot more time than that. It doesn't matter. You give real time. So we'll, you know, our future webinar we're going to do is going to is going to talk to you doctors about when you're giving your assistants the treatment plans. You will give a plan and time. I need to do a soft tissue graft and an implant. Give me two hours. I'm going to do a soft tissue graft and do a little osseous here. Give me an hour and a half. Whatever time, give them the time that you need, um, and then schedule that in there. So for this one, you're going to need not only your time. So if you, if this is too much time, just make the last two assistant. If you want more time, add more time and make these two assistant time, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go back to my original time, make these two assistant time. So don't make it confusing for you. So now we've made it productive. We've made it real time. Daisy comes in. Assistant takes them back, spends 20 minutes to get them ready. She comes and gets you. You're going to be in there for this amount of time. You're leaving. The assistant will use the last 20 minutes to make sure your patient is good to go. So I'm going to move this up. I went a little bit too far. See how here it's showing a double book there, but we haven't, we haven't arranged these yet. So now we're connecting this game of Tetris using Dentrix and we have moved it up to give you some more productive time. Still, your assistants have this time to clean their rooms, get the patient out, and it's more productive. Notice that the only way, you can, not the only way, but the best way of, of accomplishing this is that you make sure that you're scheduling from the morning forward so from the moment you walk in you're scheduling from the mor morning down and scheduling against lunch up and so you're going from the ends and filling in the middle same thing for the end of the day so that we don't put it uh, we don't put a patient in, in the middle of the day we always start at the beginning of the day or we schedule against lunch and then we move forward towards the middle and i can't stress that enough because a lot of your assistants your front desk we, we just want to make your patient happy. And so a lot of times when you schedule, you'll say, what time works best for you? When would be a good time for you to come back? If you go to a medical office or a surgical center, you will never hear them utter those words. Why? Because they need to make sure the schedule works out for their doctor. So we say, I'm going to have you come back on January 6th at 8 o'clock. Um, I'm going to have you come in at nine o'clock. You give them the time. And when they say, oh gosh, I'm not a morning person. Oh, I understand. But Dr. Sheldon sees these. That's when he sees his post-ops. That's when he sees his surgeries. They're, they're not going to fight you on it. it they, 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 they will be fine. Our thought is they're going to argue, be mad. We've been doing this for years here. It doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. It's a mindset and it will work out for you. So yes, you're scheduling from top to bottom. Also, when we start diving into more of the block scheduling, the blocks are already going to be there to know when your assistants can schedule post-ops. 
when your assistants can schedule new patients, assistant only, emergencies, reavals, so that they don't have to do the guesswork of when to put those in. You, you basically just tell your assistants, I only want to do surgeries in the morning and the rest in the afternoon. We can create a block scheduling at our next webinar to, to show you how that will work. So now we need to work with this little double booking. You can't be in two places at one time. But look at what we're double booked against. Assistant only post-op. So again, we're going to make these all slashes because you don't need to be in there. We have this patient coming back so your assistant can take a look, see how the healing is going, and they're running that third column, your third person, all is good. Now you're opened, like four units here. So now you're going to take your next surgery. Again, we're doing a game of Tetris. You're here, here, here. We need to bring you up and make it more realistic. Again, what do you need for this? This little empty spot here indicates front desk time. So Dentrix designed this because sometimes for like new patients, you have paperwork to be turned in, insurance cards to be scanned or whatever. Uh, for this surgery, we don't need front desk time. We just need assistant time. So we're gonna go back and do a standard, that are two units for assistance, 20 minutes, and then you have your one, two, three, four, five. The doctor really only wanted to have one, two, three, four. Um, again, this has to do with your assistant. How much time do they need on this particular surgery to clean up? Maybe they needed uh, another unit. I can't see cleaning up a room in 10 minutes. It just doesn't work. There's blood, there's, there's biohazard, there's things that you need to get rid of. This line here is gonna navigate you. I want you to train yourself and your team to only look at this line. This line means you are productive. You are going from room to room. And again, design it as you want. If you want more time, give yourself more time. It's not gonna affect your production. It's gonna increase your standard of care because you're seeing the same amount of patients. You're just designing it so that you're not running around like ragged. Your girls aren't running around like ragged and your patients are like, wow, you guys work so well. You're organized. You're so happy. You guys know what you're doing. That's what you want to do. You've just gone from this surgery room to this surgery room and you're going to keep the day going. You have a post-op right here. I would never recommend a post-op in the middle of your day. You just don't know what's going to happen. Um, Honestly, I would just get rid of this. Um, it's set right now for a one slash, or all slashes, meaning it's an assistant only. It's not, this particular post-op is geared toward a doctor seeing that patient. If you wanna keep it there, we just need to make it productive, make it real, so we can actually work with it. You would make it like this. If, you're, if you are going to do it, I'm gonna recommend you just get it out of your column. It's just gonna interfere. Actually, I would put it over here because uh, these post-ops are a lot easier to kind of flip through because it's just three instruments. You're ending a surgery here. You need at least two units in between. Yeah, and so. that's your main room. AOP one is your main surgery right. room in the schedule. So honestly, I would just take it down. When we get down to our end of the day, call that patient and say, we've moved that appointment. I'd get it out of your way because you're, you're really interfering with your production scheduling here. So then you would, you would keep this going all the way down. And as you can see already, look at all this that we have found. We have, we have created so much room for you to put more patients in there. What's going to happen when we're done doing this is you're going to have an hour or two or three to work with. You're going to have more production to work with. Now, not only are we increasing production, this is not always about more production, more num you know, better numbers and, and more money. It's not about that. It has to go with your staff feeling that they are being successful, that they're feeling like they're doing a good job. They feel like they're being a good advocate for your patient. They feel good about what they do. Your patients are looking at you guys calm, zen, enjoying each other, laughing. It's working out. They're not waiting for you to come into that room, staring at the wall for forever, waiting what's going on, why are they not coming in here? And then you're gonna feel better because your patients are happier. Your staff is happier. You're providing more time for sterilization to be real, your rooms to be cleaner, everything to look more efficiently. That's what you're doing here. So it doesn't matter how much time your assistants need. Look how much time here that they could be working with. They have all this time. Patient could come in earlier and they can spend some more time and your assistant has nothing else to do. Let them be in here and take care of your patient. Um, and also 
not to keep beating this up, but if you don't have a runner, a floater, or a sterile tech, get one. They're a low cost person to come into the office to make sure that your talented assistants are doing what they need for your patients. So you can keep moving these up. The only thing that, uh, you know, we, the, when you have a slash or an X, you know, this whole blue column means that the patient is in that room. So you, in addition to doing all these slashes and X's, please make sure that you have time for your assistants to flip these rooms. Our rule in this office is two lines. We give at least a minimum of two line for surgeries to get all the dirty instruments out disinfect the room and get the clean instruments in and set up for the doctor. When it's these post-ops or new patients, it's one line, it's three instruments, there's no blood. And I mean, it's, it's very simple. So we just know it takes us 10 minutes to set it up. Give them the time. If they want more than 10 minutes, give it to them. It's not going to affect your production. I promise it's not going to. So for this particular one here, go back in, first ask, how much time do you want for this? You may have to, you may have to lengthen, shorten, it doesn't matter. By the way, that's what happens the new patient visit. Danielle is asking me, how much time do you need for this particular procedure? Yes. And she's sc scheduling backwards from there. And I or see, maybe forwards from correct. there. Correct. And I do, when I'm watching, when I go and I visit the offices, what I see is the doctor do the examination. The doctor says to the assistant, I'm going to do an extraction. I'm going to do an implant. And I'll do a little, you know, t soft tissue grafting. Looks at the patient. Does a wonderful job. So, you know, Joe, today, we're, you know, when you come back, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, you know, Emily's going to get you scheduled. And great. But there's no time on there. I mean, I know, I know for a fact, our assistants know how much time my doctor needs for procedures, but usually it's not the assistant scheduling that, it's the front desk person or treatment coordinator. They don't really know how much time. They might be used to scheduling a certain time, but it's not realistic time. So, so let your assistants know. Your assistants already are gonna know that they want two units to set up to get the patient ready for you. They know that. You tell them that you want an hour, or that you want two hours, or whatever you want for this. If this is too much time for you, then reduce it. If you want more time, increase it. You can do whatever you want. You know, maybe you want like a little bit less time. It's not gonna take me that much time. Great, let's give the last two to the assistant so they can dismiss my patient in a very nice way. Great, now you have two units to get that patient ready or get the room flipped up and ready to go. And then now I have these two little units here that I am working with waste. So you can either switch your room, take this patient, bring them over to a different room so you can maximize. Sometimes you can get it in there, sometimes you can't. Depending on what you have, stay with the same room. Which sometimes you guys have rooms that are better, that you guys like better for certain stuff, that's fine. So if you cannot, because of setup and cleanup, if you cannot take these two units here and utilize it for something, you can have a few choices of it. You can either take a quick break, because this particular doctor, this office does not, they don't do lunch breaks. They don't take breaks, they just work straight through. Give the doctor a little bit of a lunch break there, or you can put something that's small in there. You have this room available. You could put something small, an emergency or something like that, whatever you want. You can, but you know this is realistic time. That for us, ideally, we want it all stacked up. So if I were to, to do that, I would actually take something and, and, and move it like under or over to make it work. Um, but if you do have some free units that you know is true free units, you can always use it for something else, something you know that is more realistic. Maybe it's this emergency here, because if you're seeing an emergency, maybe you only need two units. So you take an assistant to find out what's going on. You have two units in there because you want to see what's going on. Your assistant needs one unit to get rid of them. You can take that and you can bring that up and you can actually utilize your two units on that part. So there's a few ways that you can actually make these work. So also in emergencies, some offices do um, assistant only to determine and then come back. I'm gonna put this back because I actually wanna make this here. Some do assistant only and some don't. 
for us, our doctors want to go in there for at least one or two units, find out what's going on, and then have them come back that day or the next day for treatment. It doesn't matter how. Um, again, all we're focusing on here are these X's and you going from room to room to room. So as we go down, the, for, for this office, our office is the same way. Um, at the end of the noon period, we're working strictly with new patients and post-ops. So the same thing would happen for those. So you need to go into these and make sure you have the correct template. Our new patients are always exactly the same and yours should be the same. What you're seeing them for so that you can start stacking on those and utilizing those. We've just closed it up. Um, we're going to give you guys a 20 minute lunch break here. So I'm not worried about your lunch break. Sorry. <laughs> Make it quick. <laughs> It's all about the production. <laughs> it's funny because there's some doctors that, you know, they're adamant about their lunchtime and there's some that just don't want any. Um, my guess is those ones that don't want any, and uh, and I'll, I'll update you on this in a few months. My guess is the offices that I went to that said, I don't want a lunch break. I just want to work straight through. They're working with a non-productive schedule. So they have all these 10, 20, 30 minute openings all over that doesn't show on their schedule it just happens because the schedule is not being done correctly when they work this schedule they're going to be exhausted they're going to want a lunch break they don't want one now because they're kind of already getting it so for this one here we're working on an emergency we have here we'll just work here gives that room two units there to get it cleaned up now i can set up for this mission examination boom we've got it so if you want to keep doing that you just keep moving it up and as you guys can see, you're going to have a whole lot of time at the end of the day. You can fit in more new patients. You can fit in an, um, some emergencies. You can fit in another surgery, whatever you want. We always encourage more new patients because new patients equal collection equals, you know, more production to be on your schedule. To us, we will always say new patients is your most important patient of the day. Um, but move it all up and use your slashes and X's. So your assignment after this one, sit with your team, go to a day that's at least three to four weeks out. Don't hurt yourself by doing it for tomorrow because you guys are going to freak out of how much free time you have. And now you have to fill that schedule. Go out three or four weeks. Do this to your day. Do this to your day. See how much time you have. Call your patients. Give them their new time. And then you can actually crunch your schedule. Be more productive. Actually see more patients. Have more time so it's not stressful for you, your patients, or your staff. And you will run on time. You'll have more production. You'll get more acceptance. Your day will be so much more enjoyable. If you guys have any questions on how to do this, please email me. I will be more than happy to sit with somebody on your team and go over this. Uh, you can even have me come to your office for a few days and I can sit with you like I did the other team and we can do it all together. Um, the next webinar that we're going to do, we're going to show block scheduling and how that can help free up these areas and help your team focus on this to make sure productive scheduling is in place and it doesn't fall out of place if someone cancels, moves, or shifts their appointment. Um, so we'll do that next so that you can see how all that can come together. Any questions, give me an email. I'd love to help you. You guys have a good day.